And here we have something else that we need to melt. This time we're going to torture the battery holder. So battery holders for double A's. This one's got a PP3 clip on the end. The first one I'm going to do is the same thing but with my fingers on that side. This has got wires coming out of it. I thought this would be the easiest one to melt. This has been prompted by a complaint from a customer saying that his had melted. <laughs> God knows how, but um, his was an 8 double A holder, but this one will do just the same, same materials. And so, um, so it prompted the question of how much current can one of these take? And apparently the customer was hooking his up to a filament, which um, God knows how much current that took, but I'm going to try and see how much current these can take. Just doing a quick look at these. Um, where would be the first place to go? Maybe the rivets, the plastic at the top. More likely to be the wires. So the wires are crimped onto these um, contacts. So I'm going to stick a couple of double A's in there and use the electronic load to so inset the current. I'm also going to be um, suspending this. I've got a crocodile clip here out of view just to see if the weight of the battery pack will um, help bring about the the demise of this battery holder. So I put two newly charged double A's in there. These are 2,900 capacity. I'll suspend that from my crock clip and we'll set some current on it. Okay, so that's suspended. Um, I think the these battery holders are probably good for about 3 amps. So let's go beyond its safety. Let's call it 6. On the battery sh should be maximum about 8 amps, so let's go for 6 and see what happens. Zero that out first one. Wasn't it? Two point seven amps. Is that, is that it? It's all they can do. Let's drop it to what point five that? What? Mm, let's go to well, that's seven point nine per cell at one point three amps. What? God, that's crap. Oh well, 1.3 amps it is. <laughs> oh dear. Um, so these were good for 8 amps. Let's give it a fondle. Oh, barely warm. 25.30. Same. Okay, I'm going to stop that there after five minutes, and I've got another couple of double A's. See if these perform any better. That's the other setting. Let's see what that gives me. See if the voltage collapses on these as well. They do exactly the same. To 1.4 volts, 0.7 per cell, and point bloody hell. Mm, I wish I had some double A alkaline to test it with, which I don't. One point six amps, it'll take that all day, won't it? That's gonna melt anything. Bolt, a bolt, let's try something else. And 
so on to plan B. So the double A is rechargeable, it doesn't work. I don't have any alkalines, so I've modified it a little bit. So all I've done here is just bypass the batteries, just put links in. So the current is flowing through that, courtesy of 4.8 volt D cell pack. Should be good for about 15 amps. So it's been tested, did it last time. To my electronic load. <laughs> Where? What happened? Looks like the voltage is gone. Well, let me test this battery. Out. Four volts. Ah. Something appears to have opened that circuit. Can it be is it intermittent fault or is that something melted? I can't see anything obvious, it's nice and toasty. Ah, I see. Okay. I think it's the link wire between there's a link wire between this and that. It's very thin. I can actually see if it's gone or not. Ah. Do some investigations off camera. Very weird things, these battery holders. See that that's on zero volts, and it's connected up to the battery. I've got that slightly compressed with my finger. But when I stretch it, it comes back on. What kind of wire is this? You compress it, it goes back to zero. I was looking for a break in this, and I couldn't find one. Go back to the rest state and what? <laughs> I'm at a loss. It's connected straight through to that side's fine. Why is not broken? Just there's nothing there. You know what? I'm going to just stretch this wire and see if it'll stay on. I'm not going to keep my fingers on it. Okay, one wire nicely stretched. Let's try again. See what happens this time. Back to 6 amp. Let's see if we can get an internal short in the contact this time. I can start to see some smoke coming out of this. Around the corner there, it's melting the plastic. So there's some kind of nichrome wire or something and they're made out of resistive wire. So that answers that, they don't like six amps. Zoom in a bit on that one. It's only too much to touch. It's melting there in the corner. Oh, is that eight minutes? I'd have thought it would have been these wires, would have been the first things to go. That's not too old, 
too hot to touch. I only expected those to be good for about three amps those wires. But it's this bit. That's what's gone first. You see blowing up as well. See, I've bypassed the wire on that one and I've gone straight into the rivet there, just soldered it on. Same on the other side. I couldn't bypass that because there's no rivet on, on there, so I had to go directly onto the wire. <laughs> See, that's a cheese slice. See how hot that gets. And it's gone again. <laughs> And it's back again. G slice. <laughs> I think that's good enough. It's melted. So in the interest of science and fair play, we're going to run the test again. So we've seen what it can't do. That's 6 amps, that's another one. That's another battery holder there, it's just got a PP3 clip on top. So we've seen what it can't do. Let's see what it can do. Let's give it 3 amps and see, see if they can tolerate that for a few minutes. Oops too much there you go, 3 amps that's about 14 minutes Let's see if we can get any sort of reading of this, I doubt it no real metal there to bounce off it's about 20 degrees and we'll look at the back of the Back of the um, PP3 connector, 20 degrees. On top of the pins, 20 degrees. Don't believe this all the time. Let's have a fondle. About 20, 25 degrees. No problems, no sign of a melting. The wires haven't turned blue. Oh, that's fine. I think that's enough for now. Turn it off. So, what's my conclusion here it's that these battery holders are good for 3 amps doesn't seem to be a problem which is probably what they're designed for anyway it's handy because my rechargeables could only supply 2 amps anyway so that's not a problem um, not so good on 6 amp as you can see Again, it's probably not what they're designed for, which would be standard AA rechargeables or even alkalines. I wouldn't use these on high discharge AA's. They are available, and those can give up to about 20 amps. So, not designed for high discharge. But for standard applications, standard AA's, they're fine.